Two men that fasted for 40 days and nights. Number one, Moses. Now, it's perfectly possible to fast for long periods. But I do not think it is wise to make the time your main goal. It isn't as significant how long you fast as that you fast in the will of God, that your motives are pure and that you get the rewards that should be yours from fasting. It is basically impossible through natural means for a person to fast from food and water for 40 days. This makes the event in Moses' life very unique. Again, Moses alone was called up to Mount Sinai, this time with two tablets of stone which he himself had prepared. The Israelites should have all died for having broken the law of God, but God spared them in mercy. Moses worshipped the Lord and pled for his presence and grace on the basis of his people's unworthiness. Exodus 32 verse 28, Amplified Bible. Moses was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He ate no bread and drank no water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. This was a completely unique and supernatural fast, but by any account it is a miracle to go without water for this long. After forty days and forty nights on the mountain, Moses came down with the two tablets in his hand. He was unaware that his face was shining as a result of being in the Lord's presence. People were afraid to come near him. After delivering the commandments of the Lord to Israel, he put a veil on his face. Number 2. Jesus After being baptized by John the Baptist, Jesus was tempted by the devil after 40 days and nights of fasting in the Judean desert. Matthew 4 verse 1 Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The first thing to notice about Jesus' temptation is that it was God's idea. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This demonstrates that God was not on the defensive in this situation. He was on the offensive, demonstrating the superiority of his son over Satan. In fact, God allows us to be tempted by the devil so that we can demonstrate the superiority of Jesus Christ. Why did God put his son to the test in this way? The Bible refers to Jesus as the second Adam or last Adam. The first Adam was tested in the garden, yielded to Satan, and the human race was exiled to the wilderness. The second Adam went into the wilderness to defeat Satan so that he could lead us back to the garden. Matthew 4 verse 2 After fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. Jesus had fasted for forty days and forty nights. To fast is to forego a physical craving in order to satisfy a greater spiritual need. It entails a change in priorities. Fasting prioritizes prayer and fellowship with God in order to feed the spirit rather than the stomach. Matthew points out both the barren desert and Jesus' severe physical condition after such a long fast. A Bible commentator noted, here was the divine power miraculously seen in upholding the human nature of Christ without anything to eat. This was a miracle. Yet it was a miracle also evident in the lives of Moses, Exodus 34, verse 28, and Elijah, 1 Kings 19, verse 8. It was supernatural, but 40 days and 40 nights. This is a familiar period of testing in the Bible, both in the days of Noah and for Israel in the wilderness. Jesus will succeed where Israel as a nation failed. This wasn't self-denial just for the sake of self-denial, or worse yet, for the sake of building spiritual pride. This was a period of forced dependence upon God the Father. We remember, he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. Hebrew 5 verse 8, Amplified Bible. 
Although he was a son who had never been disobedient to the father, he learned active special obedience through what he suffered. After 40 days, Jesus was hungry and ready for battle. Matthew 4 verse 3 The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. The tempter began by saying, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. This indicates that the devil had been watching Jesus go without food. He too is aware of what you're up to and tailors his temptations accordingly. In this situation, Satan questioned God's provision. Jesus was hungry. He had not been fed by God. Why shouldn't Jesus just make what was required? Matthew 4 verse 4 Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. How did Jesus respond? By quoting scripture. Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, Man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In this passage, Moses explains to Israel how they got through the wilderness thanks to God's provision. They didn't survive solely because of the manna, but because of the one who provided it. Was Jesus hungry? Yes, but he was willing to rely on God rather than act on his own. Matthew 4 verse 5, Amplified Bible. Then the devil took him into the holy city, Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle highest point of the temple. The devil then led him to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. Challenging Jesus to jump to his death doesn't sound like much of a temptation. However, he supported his appeal by quoting God's promise of angelic protection in Psalms. The problem was that this went against God's plan. Satan urged Jesus to fulfill God's will for his life in a way that avoided the cross. Oh yes, the devil is familiar with the Bible and employs it. If he can't persuade you to act independently of God, he'll work through your religion. But God doesn't need Satan's assistance to get you where he wants you to go. Matthew 4 verse 7 Jesus said to him, On the other hand, it is written, and forever remains written, You shall not test the Lord your God. Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 6 verse 16, Do not test the Lord your God. In other words, he knew we are never to use disobedience to back God into a corner in order to force him to fulfill his plan. Matthew 4 verses 8 to 9 Again the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, splendor, magnificence, and excellence of them. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you fall down and worship me. Finally, the devil displayed to Jesus all of the world's kingdoms and their splendor. Then he stopped fooling around and got to the point. I will give you all of these things if you will fall down and worship me. In the end, Satan wants your worship. He wants you to bow. That's what he got from Adam and Eve in the garden. And that's what he wants from you. He'll make tempting offers to persuade you to do so, but it'll never be worth the cost. Matthew 4 verse 10 Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus had had enough and said, Go away, Satan. This command demonstrates his absolute power. Then Jesus quoted Deuteronomy again, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Worship is reserved for the one true and living God. If you are a Christian, you owe nothing to the devil, and you have Jesus' delegated authority over Satan. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
James 4 verse 7. Too often we come to worship God on Sunday and then serve lesser agendas and gods the rest of the week. But if Jesus is the ultimate authority in the universe, he deserves your undivided attention and service. Matthew 4 verse 11. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. How did this battle end? The devil left him, and angels appeared and began to serve him. Satan is unable to deal with a righteous life that constantly confronts him with God's word. The true king has complete authority and has perfectly obeyed God. As a result, the usurper had to flee. When the fallen angel left, faithful angels came to fulfill their rightful role, serving Christ and giving him the worship he deserved. He was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Hebrews 4 verse 15, see note there. See also 1 John 3 verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Although Jesus was the Son of God, he defeated Satan by using a weapon that everyone has at their disposal the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. He met all three temptations with scriptural truth from Deuteronomy. Jesus' temptations follow three patterns that are common to all men. The first temptation concerns the lust of the flesh. Our Lord is hungry, and the devil tempts him to convert stones into bread, but he replies with scripture, quoting, Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. The second temptation is the pride of life. The devil uses a scripture verse, Psalm 91 verses 11 to 12 here, but the Lord responds with scripture to the contrary, stating that it is wrong for him to abuse his own powers. The third temptation is the lust of the eyes. If any quick route to the messiahship could be attained, bypassing the passion and crucifixion for which he had originally come, this was the way. The significance of Jesus' temptations, particularly because they occurred at the start of his public ministry, appears to be best understood in terms of the type of Messiah he was to be. He would not complete his mission by using his supernatural power for his own needs, by using his power to gain a large following through miracles or magic, or by compromising with Satan in adulterous worship. Jesus' temptation was not merely symbolic. Many people ask, how do I fast? How long do I fast? How often should I fast? How should I break my fast? Fasting means abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. Normally, fasting is not refraining from liquids, but only from solid food. However, there were instances in the Bible when people did fast without food or without water for as long as 40 days. For this study, we will consider fasting as abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. Numerous of those who have asked how do I fast have been Christians and churchgoers for a long time. Despite the fact that the Bible contains a lot of information on the subject, it appears no one has ever trained them how to fast. Since most of these people are familiar with prayer, it might be a good idea to start by drawing a parallel between fasting and praying. How long should I fast? We come to the question of choosing a certain amount of time to fast. This is an advice that will serve you well. Don't begin with a very long fast. Don't begin with a week, two days or 40 days. Some people do, and they accomplish this, but you will find it better to start climbing the ladder from the base, rung by rung. 
If you set a goal for yourself that is too ambitious and you don't meet it, you will feel frustrated. It is possible that you will give up on it and never try it again. In most cases, I believe that it is preferable to start at the bottom of the ladder and work your way up. If you normally eat your last meal about 6 or 6.30 p.m. and don't have any snacks afterwards until breakfast the next morning, you've actually fasted from lunchtime to breakfast time, which is about 18 hours. This is quite a long time to be without food because you only miss one meal. In this way, you achieve a real fast without too extreme change in your life pattern or too great an objective. If you succeed in that, the next time you may want to skip the last two meals, the noon meal and the evening meal. If you don't eat until breakfast, then you have actually been 24 hours without food. When you start to feel like a real soldier, you can omit all three meals one day and you will have fasted after dinner the previous night until breakfast the next day, about 36 hours. Once you have achieved this and know you can do it, then I think it is time to pray and ask the Lord if He wants you to do a longer fast. Again, I would advise you not to take too much action the first time. Take two or three days or a week. If you spend a week fasting, that will probably have a substantial effect on the course of your life.